Hi, welcome again. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the for statement or for loop. We have already seen that the while loop is ideal for indefinite loops. We have used a while loop to implement a definite loop as I am showing here n is equal to 1 while n is less than or equal to 10 print n and increment n by 1 in each iteration so here the print statement executes exactly 10 times every time this code runs so this code requires three crucial pieces to manage the loop one is initialization that is n is equal to 1 and the condition n is less than or equal to 10 it is nothing but condition check and the third one is updation of the control variable so we can avoid these uh, conditions and extra variables required to make a definite loop so with the help of for loop python provides a more convenient way to express a definite loop so for loop is the most convenient way to express a definite loop so here we can see so here we can see the for loop so this is the flow chart or flow diagram of the for loop and here you can see the general form of the for loop If you look at the general form for this uh, for word the reserved keyword begins the for loop and then item means any variable of iterable type in sequence sequence is the iterable object so either it may be in string or it may be in list it may be an tuple or it may be an any iterable object or like a range of values which can be iterable okay so for loop will execute till the last element in the sequence appears okay the body of the for loop will repeat till the last element in the sequence exists if the last element is reached or the last number is reached then for loop will terminate automatically so here you can look at the flow diagram or flow chart initially the for loop will begin with the for statement that means the reserved keyword for and then it will check for the last item in the sequence if the last item in the sequence exists sorry here uh, it should be true and the false should go here so i'm sorry just a minute So let us look at the flow chart of the for loop. So here the reserved keyword for this reserved keyword for begins the for loop. Okay, begins the for loop.
and the condition will check the last item in the sequence okay so the condition will check the last item in the sequence iterable condition then if the last item exist in the sequence then the condition becomes true then it will evaluate the statements inside the for loop okay so body of the for loop will be evaluated once the body of the for loop evaluates or after evaluating the body of the for loop then it will move to check the last element in the sequence so here you can see the last element is evaluated once again if the last element exists in the sequence then the condition becomes true once again the body of the for loop will be evaluated suppose if the last element does not exist in the sequence then the condition becomes false here then the loop will terminate so this is how the for loop works in python so let us see how the for loop works so here you can see the flow diagram or the flow chart of the for loop and then the general format of the for loop for each item in the sequence evl8 the body of the for loop so if you look at the flow diagram the reserved keyword for begins the for loop that is nothing but the start of the for loop okay and then each item in the sequence will be checked okay if the last item the sequence not exist then the condition becomes false if the item exist in the sequence then the condition becomes true then the body of the for loop will be evaluated again the control flow will move to check the last element in the sequence if the last item in the sequence exist again the body of the for loop will be evaluated if the last element in the sequence does not exist then the condition becomes false and the loop will terminate okay so this is how the for loop works let us see practically how it works so here we have a simple for loop for n n is nothing but item as per our definition of the for loop for item in sequence so here the sequence of elements we can write tuple without parenthesis or we can write the tuple elements by using the parenthesis so for example here from on to 10 so for n means for item in the iterable sequence print n this is the body of the for loop just a simple expression as per our definition of the for loop for item in sequence body of for loop 
So this is the body of the for loop that is print statement. So for n in sequence means in Python the integer value starts from 0 okay or the numeric values starts from 0 instead of 1 okay so we have to remember this numeric values starts from 0 okay i will write it in double double quote okay from 0 in python so for 0 in 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 10 means 0th element that is 1 print n and the first element that is 2 print n second element 3 third element 4 fifth element fourth element 5 fifth element 6 and so on up to 10 so let us see what it prints by running the code so 1 2 10 so 1 2 10 so here n is nothing but an item okay where is this item items are inside the sequence means inside an iterable object iterable object means a sequence sequence is also called as an iterable object for item 1 print to 1 for item 2 print 2 item 3 we are printing the same item so we are not changing anything here so this is the simple example for for loop so this loop behaves identical to the while loop what we have shown earlier that is while n is less than or equal to 10 print n and increment n by 1 in each iteration the final value it prints is 10 during the iteration the variable n assumes in order all the values that make up the tuple so here from 1 to 10 So it is usually cumbersome to explicitly list all the elements of a tuple and often it is impractical. For example, if you have a numbers from if you have numbers from 1 to 1000, it is practically not possible to write from 1 to 1000. We can write but it may not look a professional one okay so what we can simply say is it is impractical okay it is possible but it may not look a practical one it looks like an impractical or unprofessional code okay and it also unvd Fortunately, Python provides a convenient way to express a sequence of integers that follow a regular pattern. So for that, we use the range function in Python. For n in range, for n in range, print n means the range expression creates a range object that allows the for loop to assign to the variable n the values from 1 to 10.
so the range expression creates a range of values from the start value to the end value okay so here we can see how the range expression looks like range means the sequence of elements that is the variable name and the range expression range inside the parenthesis beginning value stop value and the incrementation of the values from begin to stop or begin to end with the step size so begin end and then step begin is the first value in the range if we omit to enter the first value then the default value becomes zero end is one past the last value in the range the end value is always required and may not be omitted okay if we ignore the end value then the whatever the value entered as begin becomes end value step is the amount to increment or decrement if the step parameter is omitted it defaults to 1 means the incrementation or the counts are upgraded or by 1 means it counts up by 1 so range will create a range of values from begin to end with the step size so here the end value is compulsory okay we cannot ignore the end value if we ignore the beginning value then the default value will be considered as zero for example here if we work out the range expression let us look at range for example 1 to 10 so look at here we have generated a range of values between 1 to 10 but it is not displaying all the values because it is an iterable object so we can use this type of iterable object in any of the iterable functions or iterable code flows sorry iterable program codes ok so here in our case we are using it in for loop for n in range from 1 to 11 print n means for item in range 1 to 11 print the item value or the item name let us look at the variable for example sequence equal to range 1 to 10 let us print the sequence once again it is resulting the range from 1 to 10 ok so let us iterate the range of values from 1 to 11 using the for loop and see what happens by running this code so look at here we got the values from 1 to 10 so in range but carefully we have start end 
and then step right as per the range definition begin means start end and then step the start value is inclusive okay one and the end value is exclusive means it is excluded the range value generate the range of values between the lower limit and and the upper limit with the step size the default value of the step size is 1 and it includes the start value but excludes the end value means start value is inclusive and the end value is exclusive so look at here 1 is included whereas 11 is excluded because we are creating a range of values between the means uh, uh, sorry to say that not between from lower limit to upper limit excluding the upper limit okay from lower limit to one value just below the upper limit so from start to end so look at here one is the start value in range one and 11 is the end value but we are not getting that let us see what happens if we print from 0 the range of values from 0 so look at here again from 0 to 10 only upper value has been excluded so initial value means start value is inclusive and the end value is exclusive it is uh, simply looks like wall okay so look at here this is the wall yes this is the wall and we are creating a range of values from 0 to say for example 11 so 11 becomes the wall okay so here 11 itself becomes the wall and it looks like this so we are creating from 0 to 10 only so in between sorry from 0 to 10 and the range expression is very flexible and one thing to remember about the range expression is the begin end and the step must all be the integer expressions means all the values should be integers expressions floating point expressions and other types are not allowed okay for example here if we use 11.0 instead of 11 let us see what happens by running this code cell So we got an error because float object cannot be interpreted as an integer. So range will not take the floating point values. It takes only the integer values or integer type expressions. So we can use the range value to reverse the direction. from upper limit to the lower limit so here for example range so we are decrementing 21 to 0 from 21 to 0 
with the step size as minus 3 and we are printing the same value using the print statement each value is separated by space okay instead of printing each value in the next line what we are seeing here we are printing each value line by line instead of printing line by line we are going to print each value side by side with the one space gap okay so look at here 21 then the end value is 0 and the increment value is minus 3 means in reverse direction 21 18 21 minus 3 18 18 minus 3 15 15 minus 3 12 12 minus 3 9 9 minus 3 6 and then 6 minus 3 is 3 and then 3 minus 3 is nothing but 0 so as we have seen the end value is exclusive in range expression for example let us see with the value 1 what happens or the value 2 okay yes so once again we got the same value because 6 minus 3 is nothing but 3 let us again use 4 yeah look at here the end value is exclusive we end up by 6 okay as I said earlier if we do not use the end value and if we use only single integer or single integer type expression then it will consider it as the end value for example here range for example 1000 so just I have entered 1000 so range expression will consider this as the end value so default beginning value becomes 0 and the default step size becomes 1 so default begin is equal to 0 and a step size becomes 1 so we got the range of values between 0 to 1000 so 1000 is exclusive we will get the values from 0 to 999 999 okay. let us look at the simple code which computes and prints sum of all the positive integers less than 100 so let us initialize the sum value to 0 and then for item in range 1 to 100 sum each value with the initial sum value sum is equal to sum plus i and then read the total sum so here in place of item that means in place of item we can use any variable name okay it doesn't mean that we need to use n i j so whatever may be the suitable variable name we can use that name it depends on it depends upon the situation and the type of the program okay so just for the sake of illustration we are using n i like simple variable names okay single letter variable names but in practice we can use any type of variable name for i in 
range 1 to 100 sum each value 1 at a time sum is equal to sum plus i and then finally print the sum value let us run this code so here we got the value 4950 let us change the value from 100 to for example 10 just 10 and then run the code so it is 45 let us see in deep how the range expression produces a variety of sequences okay or a variety of iterable objects let us begin with the single integer value that is range 10 for example it produces a range of values between 0 to 10 if we use range and then 1 that means the starting value as 1 and the ending value as 10 without the step size then it produces the values between the lower limit and the upper limit means from 1 to 9 let's do this statement for loop to show how it works 1 to 10 okay and then just print n. so we got 1 to 9 next let us change from 1 to 10 and this time the step size as 2 so we got from 1 to 9 with the step size 2 1 1 plus 2 is 3 3 plus 2 is nothing but uh, 5 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 2 is nothing but 9 and 9 plus 2 is nothing but 11 which exceeds the upper limit value next if we use the initial value value as 10 for example and the end value as 0 and the step size as minus 1 then the number will decrease by 1 10 9 8 1 at a time okay if we decrease by 2 then the number will decrease each time by 2 similarly we can increase for example from 10 to 100 with the step size as 3 So from 10 to 100 with the step size 3. What happens if we use the negative value initially for example minus 5 and the positive value as the end value. Let us omit the step size. So look at here the initial value is minus 5 and the end value is 5 let us see what happens so from minus 5 to minus 4 it has reached up to 0 and then from 0 to plus 5 so it is similar to like uh, minus 5 
in the negative x axis up to 0 minus y to 0 and then from 0 to 4 means less than 5 ok so minus 5 that is inclusive minus 5 to 0 and 0 to 4 so you can see here how exactly it prints or generates the range of values according to mathematics we know that the negative x axis first it has to reach the 0th value and then the pointer should move from 0 to the positive end value okay similarly here minus 5 to 0 and then 0 to 4 what happens if we use the range value here sorry step val step value along with the negative and positive value for example step size as 2 let us increase the value by 10 so minus 5 increment the value by plus 2 ok uh, minus 5 plus 2 is nothing but minus 3 and minus 3 plus 2 is nothing but minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is nothing but plus 1 not 0 look at here this is how the the number will be generated with the range expression ok are you getting what we are doing practically to see how the range expression is generating the iterable object or the iterable values so it depends upon the start end and then the step size value what happens if we use both the start and end value as same for example 1 and 1 so let us see what happens so it will not generate anything because upper limit is 1 lower limit is 1 1 is inclusive and we know that end is exclusive so here the inclusive is 1 exclusive is value is also 1 so it creates an empty iterable object ok similarly if we use 1 and then minus 1 again it generates empty range of values because uh, we are going in the reverse direction from 1 to minus 1 so look at here so in the mathematics we have left side negative values and right side positive values and at the middle we have 0 ok minus 1 and then we have 0 and then we have plus 1 so range starting value is nothing but plus 1 and the ending value is nothing but minus 1 so this is inclusive plus 1 and exclusive is minus 1 so minus 1 is exclusive so we left with 0 right so it creates an empty iterable object let us see with the different uh, values for example here instead of minus 1 let us use minus 5 and see what happens 
yes it cannot create uh, negative values okay it can decrement with the step size but it it is not going to generate the negative values so let us see what happens if we use the step size instead of using just the start and the end value step size as 1 yes it is not going to create the negative values let us reverse the values from 5 initial value as 5 and final value as minus 1 decrement by the step size 1 so again we have not got any iterable objects let us see the step size as negative so this time we are using the step size as negative 1 instead of the positive 1 let us see what happens yes this time we got the values from 5 to 0 why we did not get here So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And then before 0, we will get minus 1. So minus 1, 0 from 1 to 5. So initial value here is 5 and the ending value is look at here ending value is minus 1 see minus 1 is here and we are incrementing with the step size as positive 1 so again look at here 5 decrement the value 5 with the minus 1 with the step size positive 1 because positive 1 step size will move in reverse direction is it right no positive step size will move in the positive direction only so the positive direction means from 5 to positive direction okay so that's why it is not generating any iterable objects whereas here in this case for n in range 5 to minus 1 with the step size as minus 1 look at here the iteration uh, step size as minus 1 plus 5 then step size is minus 1 so it becomes 4 so decrement with the value as minus 1 with the step size as minus 1 so ending value is nothing but minus 1 and we are using the step size as minus 1 and the ending value is minus 1 okay as we are using step size as minus 1 it will go in reverse direction so 5 and then minus 1 5 minus 1 4 and then 3 2 2 minus 1 is nothing but 1 1 minus 1 is nothing but 0 and finally minus 1 so are you getting how we are evaluating the expression range expression that's why in both the cases here also and here also we have not got any output So in a range expression we should be very careful with the positive and negative step size value. Let us see what happens if we use 
print 0 it creates an empty iterable object just 0 with the value as 0 because start value is inclusive and end value is exclusive so start value is included so it generates 0th element 0th element means an empty sequence so in a range expression with one argument the x represents the end of the range here in case range 0 for example here and the default begin value is 0 and the default step size as 1 and the second important thing to remember about the range expression is with two arguments for example here like uh, 1 to 10 the first value represents the begin value and the second value represents the end of the range and if we do not mention the step value by the by default it will take as 1 and with the range expression with the three arguments the first value represents the begin value the second value represents the end value and the third value represents the step value this is how the range expression works in python sometimes you may see the x range expression in older python books or at an online websites okay python 2 has both range and x range but python 3 does not have the x range expression okay python 3 has only the range expression and it does not have the x range expression so what we need to remember is python 2 provides x range whereas python 3 has only range expression okay. so this is the important thing we need to remember about range expression so as we said earlier for loop can iterate over any iterable object so we have seen here tuple it is an iterable object and the range expression it is an iterable object creating function okay so range expression creates an iterable object so string is also an iterable object so we can use a for loop to iterate over the characters that comprise a string for example here we are iterating over each letter in word so word get the word from the user for each letter in the word just print the letter okay let us see how it works so let us enter the word for example i would like to write my name as Ruthvi Raja space l space is also included sorry considered as a string value okay Ruthvi Raja space l let us press enter so look at here each letter has been printed line by line p r u t h v i r a j a space look at here also space 
and then L. Let us tend each character or each value by space and then separate each value using the star symbol okay let us one enter the name once again yes we got our name like this but here it is not separating so separate works only if we have multiple elements inside the print statement initially okay so let us see one more example to iterate over a literal string okay so here we have the name prithviraja space l in uppercase for c means item in prithviraja space l print each letter in this format okay that is the letter should be entered inside the square bracket so here we are writing the square bracket first square bracket with the help of string means inside the single inverted comma then the item value and then the outer square bracket means this closed square bracket and each value line by line uh, sorry side by side okay instead of line by line side by side okay and then separate each elements here for example the open square bracket item and then the closed square bracket without any space so look at here empty space so this is how we can use the separate option in print statement so this print statement will print the next line after printing each character or each letter in the word or the literal string let us run this code So look at here this is how the literal string has been printed in this forum so we got one last uh, line because of the print statement if we use multiple print statement for example like this you may notice how this works like so look at here we have four uh, new lines okay empty lines so this is how we can use print statement to print multiple empty lines let us use this uh, for statement or for loop to count the number of vowels in the text provided by the user so we know that the vowels in english are a e i o u so either capital a or small a either capital e or small e similarly up to 
capital U or small u. So take out the word from the user, count the initial value of the vowel that is vowel count is equal to 0 initially. Then begin the for loop. For in word means for item in word iterable object that is word. Word is nothing but a string value entered by the user. We know that string is an iterable object. So once the user enters the iterable object string, then we would like to check whether the word contains the vowels or not. Means vowel letter or character or not. So item for C means for item in the string iterable object. If item is equal to A or item is equal to small a or item is equal to capital E or small e or item is equal to capital I or small i or capital O or small o or capital U or small u then print the vowel separated by no space and print each vowel followed by comma and end with side by side ok and then increment the vowel count by 1 vowel count is equal to vowel count plus 1 so this item will be checked for each letter in the string literal ok or iterable string object so here we are using the backward slash in order to enter the multiple lines ok so this is used to enter the multiple lines which is a part of the code block ok here the code block is nothing but if statement so we can use this backward slash or backslash to enter multiple lines finally we are printing the vowels total number of vowels ok so let us run this code I think you have got the steps what we have followed here first we are getting the string value iterable string object or value from the user then we are initializing the count value as 0 then we are using the for loop to check whether the string value contains the vowels or not if the string value contains the vowels then how many number of vowels it has using the for loop for c in means for item in the string object if c is equal to either any one of the vowels if it counts then it will print and then it will count the vowel well so let us run this code and see how it works let us enter uh, some name for example I would like to enter training training is good look at here we have a 1 i 1 i second vowel 2 third vowel i again 3 here 4 wo 2 times 4 plus 2 is nothing but 6 let us see what happens yes we have 6 vowels a i 2 times in training and then i in is and then 2 o's in good 
so this is how we can count the vowels with the help of for loop and if statement we cannot just use the for loop to count the vowels we need some condition so for that reason we are using the if statement look at the indentation for loop inside the for loop if statement acts as the body of the for loop okay that's why there is an indentation after that look at the indentation that we inside the if statement okay so this backslash is used to enter the multiple lines it doesn't matter whether we place the multiple lines out of indentation or with the lesser or greater indentation levels so initial condition is not at finished okay we are just using this backslash to enter the multiple lines okay look at here the condition is here colon the if statement colon is here we are just using this backslash to enter the multiple conditions in two lines okay so this is not the body of the if statement this is still the continuation of the condition okay don't get confused with the condition multiple lines conditions so here is the body of the if statement look at here this is the body of the if statement these two lines print and then vowel count look at the indentation level so here we should maintain the indentation level if i decrease the indentation for the print statement notice here the error expected an indented block for this we are not getting any error are you observing One, two, three, four. So this print statement is not the part of either if statement or the for statement. It is outside the for loop. Okay, it is outside the for loop. this is how we can use the for loop or the for statement to do multiple tasks as per our requirement so thanks for watching in the next lesson we'll see how to handle or how to work with the nested loops